Hey guys, how's it going? So today's video is a houseplant confessions video because you know how I'm always recommending in houseplant videos to repot your houseplants about once a year. It depends on the variety, but that's usually about the rule of thumb. Well, I showed you this exact African violet arrangement over three years ago, and I have not done a single dang thing to it, and it's a total mess. So in today's video, we are going to dismantle this whole thing. I'm gonna show you how I'm repotting some. I'm going to be rerooting some. There's also a orchid. There's an orchid in this arrangement. Super inappropriate place to have one, but I remember the moment where I had this orchid that I needed to repot. We were in a hurry to go somewhere or something. There was something going on. And I was just like, oh, there's an empty spot in a pot. So I just popped it in. So it was at least not exposed to air. Then I meant to go maybe the next day or the next couple of days and take it out and pot it properly. But here it sits over three years later and it's totally struggling, but it kind of shows you the resilience of plants right here. I mean, this orchid in the wrong soil and the wrong environment, it's still like it's looking sad, but it's still alive and still, it's still kicking, which is, <laughs> it makes me feel really bad. Okay, so before we get into the whole tearing apart process, I'm gonna show you some of the supplies I have um, for this project. I've got a couple different sizes of orchid pot, although I do think I'm gonna probably be using the small one. The difference between orchid pots and regular pots is these typically have a lot more air holes in them because as you know, orchids are epiphytes and they draw a lot of moisture and nutrients through the air and their roots are just mainly there to attach to things. So they like a lot of aeration around their roots. Um, and then I'm actually using terracotta pots for my African violets, which is something that I prefer to do just because of looks. Um, I see lots of questions about that typically when I pot up my African violets and terracotta because there are specific African violet pots, which I do have a few of those as well, but I have great luck with these as long as I use the proper saucer. So the thing is, is you wanna look for a saucer that's glazed on the inside. See how that's shiny? You can put water in here and it doesn't soak into the saucer like it would with just straight up terracotta. So if you wanna water your violets from underneath, which is what they like, if you put water in a regular saucer, it'll just leach through the saucer and probably ruin the surface it's on. But with these glazed saucers, you can fill them up and the pot can still draw in the moisture. And I find that I have really good luck that way. So that's something that you would wanna look for if you wanna pot them in terracotta pots. I've also got the right soils here. I've got African violet soil and I've got the orchid mix sitting here. And the last two things that I'm gonna to use today are a really sharp knife and some disinfecting wipes because I'm going to be cutting like these long neck violets. I'm gonna be cutting their stem and we're going to be rerooting them. We wanna make sure to clean our blade between each cut that I make so that if there happens to be anything wrong going on with any of these violets, I'm not spreading it from one to the other. Okay, so let me clear my space. So first one I wanna address is this one right here. Let me just cut the stem off at the base, like kind of where it meets soil and show you what it looks like. See that right there? This was attached to the soil right here and then it went over the pot and it was hanging over right there. Um, so what I'm gonna do is shorten this stem. I'm going to pull some of these outer leaves off and the blooms, is, all these are spent blooms so these need to come off as well. If you're doing this process when your violet is in bloom, you can go ahead and pull those blooms off because they won't last very long. They'll wither up pretty fast um, when you kind of disrupt the plant like I'm doing today. And they do suck a lot of energy out that you want the plant to be putting into new roots. So now I'm gonna just pull off some of these bigger outer leaves and we wanna just end up with a nice shaped violet here. Let me just do that. And I'm just popping them off right at the base. You can hang on to these leaves and propagate them if you want to, but I usually find that the leaves that I take from closer into the plant, like these healthier, smaller leaves propagate a little bit easier for me. That looks pretty good. Yeah, I mean, you could take more than that if you wanted to, but I think that looks, looks really nice. So then I'm gonna take my knife and cut the trunk about one inch down, just a nice clean cut. And it looks pretty healthy. Hopefully you guys can see the detail there. I don't see any black spots, like any kind of rot or anything like that, so that's good. Um, so I'll just lay this one aside and I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing. Oh, I didn't, I didn't clean my blade. That's okay, I have to re-cut that one anyway. Hold on. Whew. Gotta do it proper. Okay. Oh, so this one's sad. Sad state. Boy, it's a wonder that anybody wants to take houseplant <laughs> advice from me. You guys, I love houseplants, but 
I tend to just neglect them once the gardening season outside starts because we are so busy with that. I don't know about this one, you guys. We'll give it a shot, but I'm not holding out much hope for that. Okay, so that was my fresh clean cut. It looks good, the tissue looks really nice. And I will probably just have to go get an itty bitty pot to put this one in. Okay, I'm gonna clean this again. We'll cut this one, in fact. See if I can just, yep, I can just pop it off with my hands. This one's not horrible. I'm gonna pull off a bunch of these outer leaves. You can see they're not looking good. They're all kind of curled. This one I haven't been able to um, water from underneath because this pot right here is the top of a little cherub that's holding it up. Uh, I have it in our great room. So I've been watering these from overhead this whole entire time. And it looked good for a long time. I mean, having something in a pot for three years, I mean, it's kind of inevitable. If you're not watering it the exact way it wants, it's gonna start to look a little, a little sad. And I don't think, I think it's looking pretty good. There's no bugs or anything like that on any of these plants. So I did clean my blade, let's give that a cut. That's what that one looks like right there. There's the stem and the cut. It is possible with some of these, like this one, I'm gonna have to plant it at kind of a weird angle. And so I'll kind of plant it at a slant and I'm gonna be putting these under a light so it will correct itself and uh, face toward the light. Uh, but I don't really wanna set it like this because I want its roots to be more down instead of out. We'll get to that when I pot it though. Okay, so let's see what these other three, I was kind of messing around with this one the other day and I think, yeah. So this one does have a root ball right there. We'll just leave that for now. I'm gonna groom it up. It's possible we might be rooting all of these instead of just transplanting them. Yep, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this because see when I groom it up like this, it's got a pretty long stem. So I wanna correct that problem and clean my blade. Give it a cut. Cut looks really good. Oh, this poor little orchid, I feel so bad. Oh, I think same for these. So this is the same, came off the same plant. Go ahead and pop them off. Boy, I'm tempted just to plant this one. It's got a weird shaped stem though. Hmm. It looks really healthy. We'll go ahead and repot this one. It's got nice blooms on it. Um, and since I'm not making a cut on the stem, I'll just leave the blooms. If they fade in a couple days, I'll just pop them off and that way we can at least enjoy color for a day or two more. And this one has a couple of roots, but a weird shape. So let's try to just fix this shape a little bit. Boy, I needed to have rotated this container more. I tend to, like my plants start to take on their own shape kind of toward the light every once in a while if I'm not on it. Okay, clean my blade. That one turned out pretty good, I think. So my last plant in here is the orchid and I have no idea what I'm gonna find here. Just a sad, sad representation of, <laughs> of an orchid. So it's got a couple of healthy roots and a few that are kind of desiccated. I'm gonna probably cut those off. I'm just removing all of the medium here. Yeah, so there's the orchid. You can see a healthy root there. Um, there's one right there. These don't look great. Um, the tops are kind of desiccated. I'm gonna probably pull some of the, some of the ones that are the, are the most dry. So those that look like this right here, like those are doing the plant no good. If you want to learn a lot of stuff about orchids, you should watch Miss Orchid Girl's channel. We'll link it down below because she does all things orchid and she's super knowledgeable. Her orchids look really good. They look nothing like this. <laughs> I have no business telling people what to do with orchids, clearly. Okay, so that cleaned up pretty nice. I do need to clean the leaves off, but I'll do that with a damp cloth with just water on it um, once I get them inside. Okay, so let me clear this off and get all my pots up here. Let's start with the orchid. And your orchid mix is just a really barky mix. There's perlite and charcoal in there. And that's perfect for orchids so that they get a lot of air around their roots. This poor thing. It's gonna be hopefully a lot happier. Hopefully I'll be able to report to you guys in not too long that this plant has rebounded and looks really good. This is some type of Phalaenopsis orchid. I think it was white when it bloomed. Clearly it has, it bloomed actually 
it bloomed I think one time when it was in this container and I was kind of surprised about it, but it never bloomed after that. So it should be much happier in here. Of course, I need to take this in and water it really well. And I'll probably put it in my plant room, probably not right directly under a grow light, maybe. Um, I might put it under a grow light or right next to it so it gets really bright indirect light. So that looks great. Now, grab a terracotta pot. So I'm gonna go ahead and do our biggest one first since that's the one that has the root ball still intact. What a great day up here in the sun porch. It's kind of overcast. It started out really foggy, but it's really pleasant up here right now. Okay, let's put some soil in first. Oh, this soil feels nice. It's much more lofty and soft. Create a nice well in my soil. Try to just get this positioned really well. I want to have it as centered as possible in the end. I should have brought a spoon up here. I'm making a huge mess. This will be the hardest one to pot though because the rest of them will just be able to set down in the soil. This one I'm kind of trying to manipulate so it's in the center. I could cut this one off too. That would make it a lot easier, but then we have to wait a little while. Like with these, I, the ones I'm rooting, I'm gonna be putting under a grow light in my plant room for the next month. And I'll talk about that process here in just a second. There, that looks pretty darn good, I think. It's nice and centered in its pot. I'm not gonna tip it very much, <laughs> so no soil falls out. Um, but I will be just watering this in thoroughly, which will go inside in a second. And I'll show you where they're gonna go in the, under the grow light. Um, and then a little bit about watering. Okay, so for the next one, I just wanna fill my container almost all the way with soil. While I'm at it, I'm just gonna go ahead and fill the rest of them as well. Okay, so let's work on this one first. Um, so this one has the weird stem. I'm going to plant it kind of like this in the soil and it will tip once I get it under the light, like I said before, because I don't want it rooting this way, I want it rooting more down. So I'm gonna create a little hole here, and it's kind of, it's pointing down, but not like straight down. It's kind of to the side a little bit, but you can see it kind of makes the plant go this way, but it will correct. The other supply that you'll need when you're rooting a violet like this is a clear plastic bag, which I do have. I only have one with me right now, so I'm gonna have to go scrounge up three more. Uh, it just needs to be clear so light can penetrate it. And the whole point of putting a bag around this plant is just to create a dome of humidity, which is what the violets need for about a month um, so they can start to root in. So let me set this down in the bag. Now this one has shipping labels on it and product labels because this was a bag down at the garden center. There was cocoa fiber in it. So this bag is a little bit big. I'm going to try to cut it to size here. Should have brought some scissors out here with me. Yeah, I think that that's a little bit better. Um, so you wanna make sure the bag is big enough, obviously, for the plant to fit in, but it's okay if the leaves kind of touch the side. They might get a little water spot on them. So if you want to try to find plastic bags that have a little bit more rigidity to them and can hold themselves open a little bit better, that's even more awesome. Or you can put something in there to help kind of hold the sides up. Uh, but this is basically what it'll look like under the grow lights for the next month. So let me go ahead and pop these last three up. Oops, okay. Just kind of tamp that soil in around the stem. That one looks awesome. Look at that. Now this is kind of overkill for size of pot here but that's okay. That's what that one looks like. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just pop these two in the same container because I don't really have much hope for this one. Um, so anyway, they can be co they can cohabitate together here. Okay, so that one's done. So basically everything that I need to do out here is done. Um, I do need to just take all of these inside, give them a good watering. Um, we'll find bags for all of these. So let me grab all of my stuff. We'll take it to the sink and get them watered here quick. All right, so I'm up in the plant room. I decided just to bring the plants and some water up here uh, because this is where they're destined to live. See that bottom shelf right there with nothing on it? That's where they're gonna go here in just a minute. Um, one thing that you can do, I wanted to mention this, when you are potting up African violets, especially to root like this, you can pre-moisten the soil. That's actually the best way to do it. 
I forgot about that step. Um, what that does is when you put the soil in the container, it helps eliminate any air pockets right away because like right now when I water these in, I will probably have some soil that kind of sinks a little bit and compacts a little bit more. So I might have to add a little bit of extra soil. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. So I'm gonna grab a big tray. We're gonna set all of the plants in a tray. We're gonna get them all watered. And then I've got some bags up here that we will uh, put them in. I've got some diamond frost euphorbia growing and it's starting to bloom. I had cut this way back, so that's exciting. Here is our fall succulent fairy garden. I moved it in here so it could get proper light through the winter months and it's doing great. Look at all those plants, beautiful. The second row down, I've got the most gorgeous succulents from Little Prince Plants that they sent over. Look at those gorgeous blues, love it. And then my empty shelf. Okay, big tray, where would you be? I hope you can see that really well. We'll see how this goes. Uh-oh. Don't get any water on the leaves. The African violets don't like that. Dang it. Doesn't look like the soil settled too much. I'm just kind of roughing it up with my fingers and repacking it a little bit. No biggie. Washing the leaves off of this orchid. Really saturating that medium. Probably do that twice. orchid I'm just going to use a paper towel to blot any water that might be settling in where the leaves connect. Doesn't that look like it's just going to be so much happier? I'm actually hoping I can fit three of these smaller violets in this bag. That actually worked out perfectly to put three in here. There's only one leaf that's touching the side and it just folded over on itself and there's still plenty of air in there. That's what you should shoot for right there though. Look at all the air around there, nice big dome. That's already starting to collapse, so that's not gonna work, I don't think. Let's see, what can I put in there to hold it up? There, that should work. All right, so here are all of the plants that were in that one container. So we've got the one that still had some roots on it and it looks pretty. I did put it toward the edge of the light because the light tube is kind of in a little bit. So I'm hoping that that corrects the shape. It'll kind of start growing a little bit more back toward that light. There's the orchid right there, nice and watered in. I'm going to be keeping my eye on that and probably coming up here a little bit later to water that. Just because when you put new orchid medium in there, it's pretty dry and I wanna make sure to get that fairly saturated. This bag ended up working. I put some plant tags that I had extra up here just to help hold the plastic bag up and that worked out great. You can kind of see from the side that there's plenty of air in there, plenty of room around the plants. And this one looks the best for sure both the packaging and the plant. So at this point, I just plan on leaving these plants up here for a little while so they have a chance to recuperate and gain some strength. The African violets that are all in their uh, bags and those little domes, um, they're really watered in today. I made sure that there was no air pockets. I didn't have to add any extra soil after I watered them, thankfully, um, but they're nice and moist in their containers. I won't need to water them for the next month. I'll leave that bag closed for about 30 days 
And then at that time, I'll come up and uh, open the bags, let them air out a little bit. At that time, about the month mark is when they have started forming roots anyway. Um, so I'll leave those bags open for a day or two and then I can remove the plant completely from the bag. The other violet that had roots, I'll leave up here for about the next month or so so it can regain its shape hopefully and kind of flatten out a bit. I'll probably in all likelihood leave all of these plants up here for the next couple of months. It always seems like when I do kind of a, re a radical repotting and rooting like this, I typically will lose a few of the outer leaves. It just is kind of inevitable. So I like to keep them up here under the proper amount of light and then I can groom things off as they kind of start to fade a little bit. At about the month or two month mark, I start to fertilize these uh, African violets at about half strength. I'll show you the fertilizer I use in a second. And I'll probably be fertilizing the orchid in the next week or two. I'll let it adjust to its new spot first. Let me show you the fertilizers I'm gonna use. I think I have them up here. All right, let's see, I need to organize so bad. Yep, there's the orchid, liquid orchid food, and the liquid violet food, and the beautiful mangave. And that's it for today's video. I hope that it was helpful or interesting to watch that whole process. I'm really happy to have it done because it's something I've really been noticing in particular over the last month. I decorated our great room Christmas tree, which was right next to where this planter was, and I was just like, oh, I need to pay attention to my plants a little bit better. Um, so I hope I'm not alone in this because some of my plants, it just happens sometimes and it gets to this point where you're like, what was I doing? Why wasn't I paying attention more? So anyway, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me and watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.